Hi everyone, good evening from Manila and welcome to another episode of Missology Beauty Talks. And for tonight, we are joined by Missology's former correspondent and Miss International Marketing Manager, Stephen Diaz. Hi Stephen, how are you? Hi, how are you? How's life been? Uh, uh, very busy with work. And uh, since there's no Miss International this year, so we're just trying to um, build up the momentum for next year and also trying to follow some beauty pageants, like, for example, our guest tonight. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure you're excited to, to interview our guest tonight. I am. Yeah, she is the first Miss, Interna Miss Earth <laughs> from 2001. Earth. And uh, that's... Here she is from Denmark, Miss Katharina Svensson Brink. <laughs> Hi, Katharina. <laughs> How are you? I'm fine, thanks. Very good. Mm -hmm. So nice to finally have you on Missology. So yeah, good to be back. <laughs> yeah, how's life been? Yeah, lots have happened. It's uh, 19 years ago, the 20th uh. anniversary. So I mean. Uh, a lot have happened. <laughs> I, I live in Sweden, not Denmark anymore, so I changed the country and I've got married and uh, I finished law school and uh, got two kids and yeah, a lot has changed. <laughs> so we'll be talking more about those changes later, but uh, yeah? at this point, we'll go down memory lane and uh, reminisce your days as uh, the first Miss Earth. So, but, be but before that, uh, I just want to ask, so because uh, pageant funds fondly call you at the first Miss Earth, but who was Katharina before she became a beauty queen? <laughs> yeah, well, um, it was uh, quite an experience, quite a different experience. Mm -hmm. One that I, I wasn't counting on from the beginning with the beauty queen, because uh, it's not that um, normal and uh, well known in Denmark or in Scandinavia, the Northern European countries. So, um, so it was, um, it was, um, it, it's a very big, very different experience that uh, that started. Um, do you want me to just to, to, to go with the beginning or how it started or? Uh, how did you yeah. join your national pageant, or yeah. was there a national pageant before you came to Manila? It, it was the first time even for the nationals, since it was the first time for Reserve, it was of course the first time for Reserve Denmark as well. Mm -hmm. So, um, but I was working at a um, sort of a model agency uh, next to my studies at a law school. Uh, and I was uh, contacted actually by the one that was uh, running the Miss Earth Denmark. Um, and they, they called me from the agency and they asked me uh, if I had heard about it and if I was willing to participate because uh, they had seen my photo there and they were interested in me and i said oh that sounds very interesting i hadn't heard of it before so why not <laughs> i was uh, in law school and it was uh, yeah it sounded like a really fun thing to do so that's so i, I said yes to participate and then uh, we did the whole show kind of on formal because it was a big thing yet in denmark it was their first year so it was like a startup year so but we had the the questions and we had the bikini session and the long gown session and everything so so we went through everything and all the environmental talk and everything to, to see how it felt. And then we were 12, 12 girls, and then it uh, ended up with me being able to go to the Philippines, <laughs> luckily. So um, I'm sh I know that uh, Miss Earth was your very first pageant. Yes. So how did you prepare for the international contest, considering you had no previous experience? <laughs> I had uh, The only experience I had was that in all years as a young girl, I watched mm -hmm. Miss Universe every year with my parents. So that I knew exactly how it looked on TV. Uh, and I've always been fashion, i always been um, interested. I always thought it was an amazing thing, but I never, never ever thought I would be one myself because I thought it was so far away and in a, in a different world. Mm -hmm. uh, so, but I prepared everything I could. I, I studied all about it and, and did what I could for the weeks I had before leaving to the Philippines. Um, and I had a lot of help with the organization in Denmark. So we, we did a lot of talking and a lot of studying and a lot of training to walk. <laughs> <laughs> I'm used to walking high heels, not a problem, but not on a catwalk. <laughs> uh, yeah. So that so, was. But, yeah. So um, when you arrived in Manila, what were your first thoughts back what, then? What is going to happen? <laughs> 
It was so new and there was such a lot of girls from all over the world. It was just so huge. I'd never been to Asia before as well, so everything was new to me. Um, but uh, it was just, yeah, the thoughts were running through my head. What is this? What have I gotten into? And But then everything just happened so fast. And you know how it is. The three weeks in the Philippines in Manila before the pageant, it, everything happened so fast. You, you work the whole time. It's out planting trees and uh, meeting with the mayors and doing lots of uh, lots of things the whole time for the environment. So it was it was three weeks of school. And then in between that, we also had to train with the gowns and the bikinis and the the walking and the makeup and everything so it was you didn't have that much time to think you just have to roll with the flow mm -hmm. so at this point i'll be flashing uh, a throwback photo from 2001 and this is one from one of your um first uh events and even up to now that is one of the most uh, anticipated uh events of miss earth the press presentation so are you ready <laughs> yes exciting yeah, so it was from the press presentation, the one in the middle. So um, you said earlier that uh, you were not, um, you were not, um, com um, you do not have experience in walking in the catwalk. So what was, how was it um, present presenting in a bikini back then and with the press for the first Miss Earth? Extremely nervous. <laughs> <laughs> It was a very, very special experience because, of course, I had never been in a bikini in front of that many people either. So the whole thing was really going out of my boundaries and, uh, yeah, just thinking, okay, I'm here. I'm here to do my best and uh, just let go of every kind of ner nervousness and let's just try my best. But that was very, very special the first time. Also because when, when we did that exact show, the first uh, in front of the press, you, you only had press and if the press was everywhere. And if you're not even used to handling press, which I was not, uh, it was they were very close. It's not like you're on a stage and you're 100 meters away. They were very, very close. So that was very, very interesting and special. I was extremely nervous. And I've read um, some of the, the old uh, pageant blogs. And what they had to say about you back then was you were the tallest contestant so, so did you think did you think being the tallest contestant was sort of uh, an advantage to you at, in Missouri? I think it was in a way due to my personality it fits my personality very well I love being tall I've always been one of the tallest uh, in my class and everywhere else and I always liked it I always wear high heels anyway I it's I like I'm the kind of person I'm. I'm very. I'm not that um, show pony of me. I'm very. I, I don't. I don't mind being in the back. I, I. I show anyway because I'm so tall, and that fits me very well. So. And um, at this point, we will we'll go now to the finals of uh, Miss mm -hmm. Earth. Yeah. And um, but going into the finals, did it ever cross your mind that you are actually going to win the title? No. No, no, never, never. I knew Why? that. I, I knew that a lot of the girls that were there had already joined some of the biggest pageants before. They were trained for this for years, and they knew what to say. They knew how to do. They knew everything. So I thought that I was just a, a starter, a beginner in this, and this was my first time. And I thought, if I could just please make it to top twelve, so I could go on stage just one more time. That was my goal. Uh, because doing all the preparation to just do the opening ceremony, ceremony yeah, the, my dream was just to go to the top 12 so I can go on stage again. And then I, I could leave the, the top three and top four for the girls that were prepped for this. <laughs> so who were the girls that you thought were the toughest competitors back then? Uh, Miss Argentina, Miss Brazil and Miss Kazakhstan, the three, uh, of course, I thought were going to be very, very high. Uh, I also thought that um, uh, Miss India was going to be qu quite uh, high up on the scale. Miss um, uh, Estonia also. I thought she was, was in the Miss Universe a year before that. Yeah, so exactly. I knew quite... that as well. So, and you could feel it on them, and they they knew what they were doing, and they were there to win. That was also mm. for sure, and I think that also was quite a difference. I could easily be more humble because I had no idea. I had no goal or any pressure on me from home that I had to be top four or win or anything. So I think that was perhaps my advantage as well. Mm -hmm. So take us back to this special moment when you were called in the top 10 
Yeah, it was amazing. I was so, so happy. I thought, okay, now I made it as far as I wanted. Now I can just relax and enjoy. <laughs> oh. So your, your first goal was already met because you only wanted exactly. at first to just be back on stage. Yeah, everything from there was just a plus. That was what was going on in my head. I was just so happy that I was uh, I had gotten that far. So pageant, pageant of service back then um, have always um, said a lot of good things about your communication skills. So have you always been comfortable on, on stage and uh, answering questions or interpret, in, interpreting those uh, environmental, environmental pictures? I think it came quite easy, first of all, because environmental issues are very normal and we are very, very fine in Scandinavia, just as I said, the, though, then it's the same today. Like our system is so well developed. So for us, environmental issues and careness is, is very normal. We, we all do it. All our kids are brought up. They even they teach in school. They, I mean, it's just a part of our everyday. So that, that all came to me very easy. And to be on stage and talk in front of people, that's part of my education in school and law school. So I, I think that part also came quite natural. Mm -hmm. So now I'll be flashing another, another photo. And it was when you were finally called into the top four. Oh, amazing. <laughs> at this point, did you still think that you're not going to win? At this, start, at this point, it felt like I almost started think, stopped thinking because it was just now I was nervous because I had never, ever guessed that I would go that far. So I just remember standing there thinking, this is not happening. This is not happening. What's going to, how is this going to end? And I, I thought that as I already met my goals, and this was beyond my goal. I was just so happy. So I was, I was certain I was going to be fourth anyway. So I was just so happy. I wouldn't have, you know what I mean? It was just, yeah, I would have been happy being fourth because that would have been such a huge experience anyway. So the winning part was just way off, way beyond. I'm quite curious about the evening gown that she wore because it was really very beautiful, well, well fitted. <laughs> and it seems like the kind of evening dress that um, um, a royalty would would wear. Um, it uh, it looks similar as the evening dress that was worn by Miss Poland, who won Miss International that same year. Oh, so is not. it a European designer or? Actually, it was a Danish designer. It was a Danish designer. Yeah, yeah. it looks very uh, northern European. Yeah. With a, yeah. Minimalist. <laughs> minimalist. Mi minimalist. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. It's so simple. I think that's also one factor why you really stood out. Yeah. And it, it's so much me, the personality. It's, uh, you. I mean, it shows the body and everything. You, you yeah, easily, yes. It really shows your movement. But still, it's simple, like me. And the light blue, I love color. Light blue fits my blue eyes and the, and the blondness. And, uh, and it's just, it's not boring, but it's not too much. You that's have to true. see me and not only the dress. Yeah, that that's, uh, look at that. It's so beautiful. A bit yeah. icy, like uh, Scandinavia, nice and winter. And, yeah. Those were the thoughts behind, anyway, when we chose it. <laughs> uh, what's the name? Who's the name? What? What? Sorry, what's the name of the designer? Who is it? Vibai. Oh, and Vibai. Is she still <laughs> active right now? Or she? Actually, uh, uh, probably she is, I, she I believe. Is. She is a big designer in Denmark and Copenhagen, okay. but uh, I'm not that into it anymore since I live in Sweden. So, okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, but, so, uh, big name. Yeah. So going back, so when you finally answered, the four of you finally answered, yeah. did you still think that you're still gonna end up fourth? Yes. <laughs> really? Yeah. Yes. Because uh. We didn't hear the other hands, you remember? Uh -oh. It was very special at yeah. that time. We were in this uh, cubicle, so we couldn't hear the other hands. Yes. <gasps> so finally, when uh, this moment happened, I'll be flashing the next photo. Yes. The two of you, you and Miss Brazil. <laughs> yeah, that was amazing. That was really crazy. Yeah, at this I point. Was, at this point, I was certain I was going to be second, of course. <laughs> uh -huh. yeah. I, the Danish I, I, humility is there always. Well, I really never, ever, ever expected it. So it was really a huge surprise. And I'm not sure how honest I can be with you. Yeah, am I supposed to be completely honest? 
if you if you look at this uh, serial of photos, you can see uh, the surprise in both our eyes. Yes. Right? At this point, none of us know who's won. <laughs> yeah. Because yeah, it, was, it was really it was really um, frustrating. But when when the, the when the TV host or the the host said that we are now going to announce, I've heard it uh, prehand many many times. I've seen the video. And, and now I hear clearly that the host says we are first going to announce the runner-up oh, yeah. on Earth. But when you're on stage and this nervous, you don't hear anything. So we uh, look at the, the two of us. We look because she said um, he said um, Brazil because he said runner-up. But we didn't hear that he said runner-up first. So we yeah. assumed that he said the one the one that's going to be Miss Earth is Brazil. So we both thought it was her. So we're looking at each other. What did he say? Was it Mr. Earth or was it Runner? Which one is it? So it's not until a few seconds after, I think it was Miss USA, she screams in the background, it was you, Katerina, you won. And it, oh! <laughs> <laughs> so at that photo session you just showed, we're just looking at each other, okay, asking each other, who won? Do you understand who won? <laughs> so because finally the mystery is now answered because we've always wanted to know what happened during that moment. <laughs> <laughs> no, actually, that was just it. <laughs> and um, you mentioned Miss USA, and uh, in a in an old article from uh, an old uh, pageant website, they said that they interviewed before all the candidates and asked who they thought was gonna win Miss Earth, and Miss, yeah. U Miss USA was the only candidate who said that Denmark will win Miss Earth two thousand one. <laughs> I don't know. Interesting. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, she was a great person. She was very good. She was so good at talking. She was very, very interested and very caring, and yeah, she she felt deep into the environmental issues. It was really, it was great. So when the when the crown was finally placed in your head, so yes. so it was it was a uh, the moment of truth that you you were actually Miss Earth, the first Miss Earth. So yeah. What what did you think? What the, what were the first thoughts that was running in your mind? This is just not happening. <laughs> It was like a it was like a dream. Everything happens so fast. You don't even get real time to think. You just walk. You do what you've seen on TV. What I've seen so many times with Miss Universe, just to go up and 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 do the walk and smile and be happy. I was just so incredibly happy and proud. It was amazing. It was. Really, I was thinking, oh, wait until I call my parents and tell them this. They're never gonna believe me. <laughs> they didn't either. So, <laughs> oh, it was amazing. So what 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 were what were the reaction of your family when you finally called them and told them you won? <laughs> well, the show I think I believe ended like uh, eleven o'clock Philippine time. Mm -hmm. or 12. It was very late and it was uh, evening time our place. So they haven't seen it. They couldn't see it live because we don't have the TV. So they were just waiting for me to call. So when I called them and said I won. They were just like, yeah, yeah, ha, ha, how did it go? <laughs> <laughs> did you enjoy it? Yes. They were just relaxed. <laughs> so they didn't believe me in the beginning. So. <laughs> yeah. no, when did it finally yeah, sink yeah. in that you're, you actually won? I think it took a couple of days, actually. I mean, you understand in the beginning, of course, I won. I have the crown and everything, but it took a few days just to to melt everything, to remember every detail that it was, everything happened so fast that so you just had to go through it over and over again in your head. Mm. So, so um, one of our viewers, uh, Pete Figueroa, is asking, uh, what are the countries that you traveled during your reign? Well, unfortunately, not that many because it was 2001, so in yeah. November, so it was very short after. So, uh, yeah, the 9-11 in, in the US. So uh, due to the uh, security reasons, we were not allowed to travel that much. Mm -hmm. And the first year of Miss Earth. So uh, I remember we were in, in Cyprus, in Greece, and did a, a fashion show uh, for cancer. And we did a few other things. But uh, I was supposed to go to the UN conference in, in, Af in Africa, uh, which was unfortunately canceled just short into the travel due to security mm -hmm. reasons. And yeah. So unfortunately, not that much, that much. I would have loved to travel much more. So it was mostly Greece and a few other places, and then back to the Philippines again and the year after, which was really nice. Yeah, so speaking of the Philippines, what were your fondest memories of uh, staying in the Philippines during Miss Earth? 
there are so many. There are so many different memories. I mean, of course, the pageant itself was a huge memory. That was the biggest one, of course. And then all the beautiful places, the islands, it was amazing. Um, I was one of the, the ones that got to go to this beautiful island where we did the uh, uh, the shampoo uh, commercials uh, during the three weeks before the pageant, which was really, really fun, amazing, beautiful. And where we and the beautiful island we, we went out to for the um, the um, bikini session, which was really mm -hmm. amazing as well, uh, the, the pre-competition. So beautiful places. And then when I came back the year after, I had... Uh, to do the commercials before all the girls arrived. And then I had three weeks off in the Philippines before the pageant itself. That was really yeah. amazing. So I went for a, a trip around the Philippines for three weeks. So that was a huge experience. I got a diver's certificate and uh, yeah, it was amazing. Beautiful. That was great. <laughs> good to hear that. So it was a good combination of both the pageant and that extreme experience in itself. And then to see such a beautiful place on earth. Mm -hmm. And uh, now I'll be flashing again a throwback photo. And I remember as a child, one of one of the the photos that we always anticipate from pageant winners are the the post pageant photos. And this is one from your batch. Uh -huh. <laughs> the calendar, the desk calendar photo with your um, <laughs> elemental card. So, Beautiful. That was fun. And I, I think remember. you're still wearing here the the gown. From yeah, the finals. absolutely. You fitted perfectly for that as well. Oh, it was such a great experience. So much fun to do. Oh, <laughs> yeah, I have to look everything. I've saved everything, of course. Mm, you actually still look the same. <laughs> you have to, to age a bit. <laughs> yeah. One of the best years said that you age gracefully. Thank you. <laughs> TJ. <laughs> Thank you very much, TJ. I'm glad to hear that. It has been 20 years, so. <laughs> when you don't see the difference so much every day, but when you see the old photos, you realize something did happen. <laughs> so, okay. The next question uh, might sound cliche, but this is also a question that was asked on Instagram by one of our followers. Mm -hmm. And uh, how has the winning Missouri changed your life? Uh, well, first of all, the experience, of course, itself, and all the traveling I, I got to do in the Philippines. I got to see Asia, um, and I got to experience Manila, and uh, I learned a lot about how the environment works in other countries. It was a huge experience to, to meet the people from all, all around the world and to hear how they work for the environment. It was great even the years I came back as a judge. Um, last time was Austria. And Vienna. It was really great to meet the other organizers uh, from the other countries to hear how much they are doing, which really, 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 once again, just enhances that Miss Earth is so different than the other pageants because it really has a serious cause. Many of them are there for the cause ahead of the pageant itself. So um, after Miss Earth, uh, you pursued your you still pursued your law law school. Yeah. So. Yes. Um, and then uh, you, you met your husband and you had a wonderful family. So can you tell us more about yeah. them? Yeah, um, I finished law school um, and I worked as a lawyer for a few years. But uh, during my law school, uh, I met my husband, who is um, an international um, dressage rider. Uh, I'm a horse fan, as you know, since the pageant. I've been riding my whole life. So mm -hmm. meeting a professional rider was perfect, <laughs> perfect combination. Uh, so since I was not a professional rider, but a lawyer and had the hobby horses, then I could combine it and uh, get the lifestyle of the horses that I really love. So that was perfect. And we met, of course, through horse people, horse friends. Um, so, um, so I moved to Sweden uh, mm -hmm. while he was still competing. Um, and then uh, first one child and then another child. So now my life is on, uh, on our farm, the horse farm, where I work as a lawyer as well, but do everything in the office, uh, all kinds of administration, bookkeeping and everything with the staff and all marketing and web pages and yeah, everything. Besides writing, all the writers do that. <laughs> are, your, are your kids also interested in uh, horses? Yes, both of them actually. The oldest, our girl, uh, is 10, Angelina. And she, she is riding, she is riding a lot. She is riding um, a dressage pony. She just qualified for the Swedish championship on pony. 
nice. so she's very very dedicated and uh, our son oliver who's turning nine soon uh, also writes more as a hobby like three times a week is enough for him perfect so really really nice it's nice to hear mm. we've so done everything for them to try everything like hockey and tennis and soccer and ballet and everything but uh, it's up to them to choose what they want it's really really important because they're never going to do anything that we push them to anyway so they mm -hmm. get the opportunity and if they want to write of course they're supposed to write so, up to yeah. them. and now at this point i just want to give a shout out to some of our live viewers yeah. and uh, a lot of them have been saying hi to you uh, <laughs> <Right back. laughs> so um Here's one from Jericho, and he said, hello, Katharina. Hello. Hi, Jericho. Yeah, and another one from Newey. Hello, Katharina. Hope your family is safe. Uh, are you still in contact with your fellow Miss Earth 2001 girls? Not that much. Uh, I haven't seen them or talked to them for ages. I have a little contact with Miss Brazil. Uh, actually, I had a really strange experience. I met uh, Miss India. 10, 10 years after the pageant, which is 10 years ago then, on the streets in London, which was really strange. I mean, London is a big city and we were there just for a weekend and we came down a small alley at, at 11 at night and mm -hmm. suddenly we passed two girls, me and my husband, and we, both me and my husband look at uh, Miss India's friend because she was wearing a dress that I also had in my wardrobe. So we both looked at the friend and said, oh, that's my dress. And then after a few meters, then she calls me and says, Katerina. And I turned around and said, God, that's Miss India. What's the chance? She was there on a vacation. I was there on a vacation. Yeah. So that was very strange. But other than that, no, unfortunately not. What, what a coincidence. Small world, very small world. Yeah, small world indeed. Yeah. And, I also had a, I had a Danish friend that um, went to Turkey on a vacation and came home and said that she saw me on a photo album. So it happened to be that she was uh, in uh, Miss Turkey from 2001's house and she saw uh -huh. she showed her a photo album and then she said oh that's my friend from Denmark <laughs> <laughs> so yeah Small world. and uh, another another uh, greeting is from Chester he also says hi to you hi Chester you uh, a lot of uh, Mizzard fans uh, have missed you <laughs> <laughs> I miss it too I want to go back yeah, another is from Lan, and he said, "Hi, Queen. Uh, maybe he's asking if you you kept the you kept the crown." Of course, I do. I have everything. I just don't have it in this room, so that would mean I have to leave the room. So I have it all in, in the walk-in closet where I have everything up. Of course. Oh, that's nice. Besides, nice to hear that you have the crown. Of because, course. Uh, My daughter is very envious. <laughs> Miss Earth changed the crown. You're the only the only winner of Miss Earth to have that crown. Yeah, I know. I'm so happy about that. It was not very comfortable, but I'm very happy that I could keep it. <laughs> I, I can say that it, it isn't that comfortable to use because when they were crowning you, it was like they had to depress it on. Exactly. <laughs> it was it it my hurt hair. around here. Yeah, I know. I had a, a stupid hair. Uh, uh, stupid hair for the night because if I had planned to, if I had uh, any could ever see foresee that I was going to wear the crown, I should have had my hair differently. But uh, when I got the crown, it was not really easy. <laughs> so that that would be a, a a a tip to all the girls out there. If you if you want to win, then prepare your hair for the exactly. for the crown moment. <laughs> already that the, the the crown would fit your your hairstyle exactly <laughs> and the, another greeting is from tj we mentioned him age earlier oh my god you age gracefully thank you so much very happy to hear that yeah and another another hello from becky hello becky and from rex oh my god still beautiful beautiful miss earth katarina oh, thank you so happy to hear that yeah. And here's another, an interesting question from Chester Matre. It's been 20 years. What are the things that you miss being Miss Earth? I must admit that, uh, of course, it was great fun with all the attention. <laughs> uh -huh. It was an amazing experience. And uh, it's just so different from my everyday life. So sometimes it could be great fun to just go back and, and get a bit more of that world since uh, we're not really have that much in that of that kind of world in Northern Europe. 
I've been a bit uh, engaged with the um, Miss Earth Denmark also a few years ago, um, just to try and get it up running more and get it to become a bigger thing in Scandinavia. So I, I've, I've done what I can do to get, to be part of the world again, and then twice also to be back as a judge, and I would love to be back as a judge again. Yeah, yeah maybe, maybe this year, because they're doing a virtual pageant, they can yeah. tap you as one of the judges. Yeah, I have this dream of coming back in person one time in the Philippines and bring my daughter as well to her, for her to experience it. That, yeah, that would be great. Yeah. Speaking, speaking of your daughter, uh, one of our viewers, Joy is asking, is your daughter uh, interested in joining beauty pageants in the future? <laughs> At the moment, no, that's her definite answer. But uh, you never know how it will be. She's only 10. So, I mean, a lot can happen. <laughs> if, if ever she tells you, Mom, I want to join with you, what would you think, be your advice? I think the problem is a bit the same with the writing. That uh, yeah. her, my husband has been ranked number one in the world and he has uh, competed at three Olympics. Her goal is to to get a medal at the Olympics and to be better than her father. But I mean, she's got quite a road ahead of her if she wants to be better. So I mean, it's a quite high goals. And if she wants to join a pageant, can she be better than her mom? Then I mean, it's quite a lot of pressure if you want to join a pageant just to join to have fun. But if you want to do better, it's difficult to do much better. That's why also people ask me, oh, do you want to join Miss Universe then after Miss Earth? How? Why should I? I've already, I've already won. It could only get worse. I mean, <laughs> to win again could be, of course, fun. But I mean, Miss Earth is something special. And there's quite a big chance that it would go not that good. Yeah. So yeah. I think she has a lot of pressure on herself. She's a competitive person. And uh, to join a pageant and not do as well as her mom, I don't think that's her style. No. Yeah, and especially as the first Miss Earth, you've already set the bar so high for the next winners. You set the standard per se. So another one is asking uh, Christian Reyes, mm -hmm. what can you say that Miss Earth has become big? pageant now around the world ever since uh, 2001 since 2001 when you won yeah i mean it's just growing the environmental issues are huge all around the world and it's just getting more and more, more well known by everybody so i mean the cause is amazing and people are understanding now that the pageant is not just a pageant it's also a way of getting out with a message that is working really really well especially in all these countries where pageants are really really a big thing because then you have another media to to reach the children, so you can start early. So I, I think it's it's a really, really big pageant. It has to be a pageant as well, otherwise you lose all the pageant people, of course. So it's important that it's a pageant, but it's a really, really good way of getting out with a really important message. Mm -hmm. And uh, earlier you mentioned that pageants are really not that popular, especially in uh, European countries. Mm -hmm. So but as uh, the first Miss Earth, you're also the you also hold the record of being Denmark's only major pageant winner. So, how does it feel to be honored as such, especially by uh, the loving pageant fans? Uh, it's of course amazing. I hope I can keep that title for long. Even though, oh, sorry. Even though I, I I of course hope that we will have other pageant title holders in the future. I of course also love being the only one so far. <laughs> But, but of course, you, you will always be. You will always be the first. Yes, and that's a very good thing. I think I really like that as well. Yeah, not just one in the row. Mm. I think the Northern European countries have some of the most beautiful women, and yeah. very confident and very opinionated at the same time. I've been to Denmark once, and I talked to some some people there and uh, i realized that oh gosh how come denmark doesn't even place that high in miss universe or miss world well, of course we had the miss earth in you but um seeing all those wonderful women just sipping coffee coffee on the on the streets and chatting about just whatever everything and then playing on the parks um, yeah made me think that uh, maybe you're just a little bit underappreciated in the world of pageantry. I think, but, it's, I think it's a combination because I think that uh, there's such a, a big, uh, it's not our tradition. And I think that's why a lot of people don't join the pageants in Scandinavia because it's not our tradition. That's true. Uh, so unfortunately, because they have this uh, idea that uh, 
that it's not about intelligence and it's not about the questions, it's all about the looks. And that's uh, a really no-go in Scandinavia. Yeah, it's uh, really very sad, uh, considering the fact that a lot of first winners of major pageants are from Scandinavia. Mm. And that includes <laughs> you. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. We try to change, change that tradition, but it's so grown in and it's so difficult to change. Mm. It has become, it, it's, a, it's a long way to go. Yeah, because you know when you talk about uh, okay, what about in 1952 when blah 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 won Miss Universe? She's from Finland, or what about 1950 something? You know, she's from Sweden, and uh, the young people nowadays could not relate to that, right? No, But at least in your case, you were in the you're a winner in the 21st century. Exactly. And so you hope that it could change something. I hope it did as well. We did have a few years in uh, in Denmark where it really. It, it became much more popular. But uh, I think we, we need an organization in Denmark that really believes it and then do everything. So, um, and uh, until that starts, then it will be difficult. It's they like should capitalize on you as well. You know, <laughs> you, you are such a charming woman, woman with, uh, with an accomplishment. It's not like you just won the title and all that. You became no. a lawyer and uh, you have an amazing Austria. family. Yeah. You, so it's uh, it's it's no joke actually. It's uh, something oh, that could, it, yeah, it's something that they could should actually capitalize. You know, what if you didn't win Miss Earth? Probably your life path would have changed as well. Absolutely, right? but I think it would have helped. I think unfortunately it was also the year with the 9/11, which mm -hmm. meant could, I couldn't travel that much. I believe that if I had traveled a lot more and it would have been much more in the media, it would have been an advantage, of course, to get uh -huh. it more popular in, in the market. Now it wasn't much media because it wasn't much that year. Mm -hmm. Pretty much like the reign of the current Miss Earth right now. Exactly yeah. the same thing, yeah. And not just Miss Earth, <laughs> all winners. Not everybody, it's all businesses, it's everything. It's just strange. Yeah, so going back, um, I'm, I'll be flashing again a throwback photo and yeah. this is from your final walk. Yeah. So um, how, how did you prepare for, prepare for that day that you will be passing the title? Was it a sigh of relief or uh, you wanted to, for the rain to be extended? Yeah, I would have loved to travel more. So I, I, wasn't, I could have loved to, to stay good for a, a, a while more. But uh, it was really, it, that was really a, a great thing to, to get to do the final walk. It was a really, it was a really great experience. To feel to be able to go up on stage once once more and not be nervous for uh, the result because I already had one. I had nothing to lose. That was a really really nice feeling. It was great to be back that year and to to talk to all the girls that were so nervous and everybody were listening to my advice and uh, oh how is it how was it last year and what did you do and how did you win and everything. It was a huge experience and so that final walk was like a final. It was a stop. It was an end, but also a really great final to close it. Mm -hmm. And, and you it's a different crown. Sorry, what? <laughs> it's a different crown. <laughs> yes, beautiful crown that one too. But I guess <laughs> we <to> keep it. <laughs> it was for the next one. Was it was beautiful. for the next one. Yes. I think they, they use this crown for the next 10 years, I guess. Yeah, very beautiful. Oh, it, was a beautiful it was really a great experience. Yeah. Yeah. And um, a lot of uh, our um, viewers are asking what what has uh, changed a lot in your opinion about miss earth since 2001 what do you think has changed a lot? it's become much bigger so you reach out much more so you have a, an opportunity to reach very much further so and it's um, it has kept the, the the serious part with the environment which is really really Amazing! I was so happy to see that in Vienna with the other organizers that uh, some of the girls were mostly there for the environment call, and I think that's really, really amazing that they stay true to. to it, it's 19, 20 years. I mean, and they have stayed so true to, to the cause and uh, still doing a really, really great job. I think that's really important. And to get it up on top four in the world means that mm -hmm. a lot more people are listening. Yeah, and uh, speaking of Vienna, it was uh, during the 15th year when you came back as a judge. Yes. So um, how, how different was it uh, seeing all these girls 
uh, as uh, contestants and you sitting as a judge, as a former Missouri. Ah, it, was, it was a great experience. I did it once before when it was the 10th anniversary in the oh. Philippines. Uh, and it's a really, really, it's, it's so great because it, it just brings back all the memories. It was, uh, now the, this was in Vienna, but last time in, at the 10th anniversary, it was in Manila again. And just to see all the people from the organization, it's all the same people. I mean, it's, it's such a, an amazing organization. It's not like it changes hands every second year. I think that's also one of the uh, the great things about uh, the Miss Earth that it's really it's true to the cause, but it's also the same people organizing. So they're just they have a goal to get it bigger and better, and they keep that rope mm -hmm. because it's the same people. So they they have all the experience. They know how to do it. And to sit as a judge, you get to see the, all the good parts, and uh, to be part of the result, which is really amazing. Yeah. We, we always ask uh, former winners what they think has changed. But now I will ask you, what do you think has not changed in the way Ms. Earth chooses its winners? It's a good combination still between the answering and the, uh, and the beauty part and the, the grace and the queen part. It's still a queen. It's not just a good looking girl in a bikini. It's a beauty queen, which I think is really important. It has to be uh, a girl that can represent Ms. Earth for a year. Uh, and I think they're staying true to find girls that can actually do that. Yeah. And looking at the, all the, the roster of Miss Earth winners, I think they were all patterned after you. Most of them are patterned after you. Aside from the physical beauty, they are, they are all uh, good speakers. And I yeah. think Stephen would agree with that. Yeah. I, I think, agree. Yeah. I think that's really important because you choose not a girl for a, a one photo shoot. You choose a girl for a whole year as an ambassador. Yeah. Well, well, maybe except for one year. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But in general, Miss Earth winners are really good speakers in general. You have to say that. Yeah. Even the runners up. Yeah, exactly. So yeah. I think and, that's um, also a good a good thing with the Miss Earth that they have um they have they know what happens even behind stage. So I mean they have a, a good idea of the person, not only what they see the few seconds on stage. That's true, that's true. Yeah, because even in 2012, for example, that girl from the Czech Republic, Teresa, she wasn't able to answer a question, but I think it's the inner beauty that came out mm -hmm. um, that the judges or the organization found in her. But even, eventually she was able to have an amazing reign as well. So yeah. it's I really a mix. Helps. Yeah, and I think that helps because you have a few people from the organization that are also judges. Mm -hmm. and they've been with these girls for three weeks, so they know what they are capable of, and when they know what they what they are like as persons. Yeah, like how they look or how they act on that one question. Yeah, I think it has something to do with the fact that being Miss Earth as well, especially in modern times. In the last, let's say, five to ten years, um, it has become more like a full time job for the girls once they win the Miss yeah. Earth title. So that's why the, the the organization really has to choose carefully the winner exactly it, which is very different from our organization which i actually mentioned um in our previous interview of beauty talks because our 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 winner is not a full-time um employee of the organization so that's the difference between miss international and miss earth like miss earth you're really so focused on your costs um yeah. on the things that you have to do the travels uh, that come along with it yeah yeah that's really that's a really amazing part of it. Mm -hmm. So at this point, we're now on the last part of our interview. But before we proceed to our regular questions for this portion, I just want to ask if we will ask you again the same question that was asked to you in 2001, <laughs> would your answer be still different? No. Mm -hmm. Actually, I'm not I'm not practicing law more than what I'm doing in my in the company, our own company. But uh, we, we work for the environment every single day. I mean, we are so environmentally uh, friendly and it's such a big part of our everyday life. So I mean, just in our farm, in our estate, we have um, earth heating. So I mean, every electricity and all the heating all over the water of our place comes from the earth, from uh, drilling down in the earth. And uh, we, we, what we do with our garbage every day, it's everything is sorted in like seven, eight different ways. And uh, we take care of everything that comes from us. So we are very, very, everything is ecological. Whatever you can get is ecological. So we uh, do a lot of the environment every day. 
I can nice. vouch on that one because when I was there for four days, mm -hmm. um, the host, not hostel, the, the place that I stayed yeah. has these all specifications on <laughs> what kind of garbage should I put in here. Yeah. And it's like, okay, well, in, in, in Japan, we only segregate the, the they are biodegradable to the non-biodegradable, but in 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 Denmark, there is still more more detailed as yeah. far as, for example, milk milk boxes, for example, has to be different. And I mean, and we more, really do not. I mean, it's it's really extreme. It's like even when we buy milk at the supermarket, it's milk mm -hmm. from a go there place so it doesn't drive far with the transportation so that also is better for the environment so we are very conscious so and your bike lanes i love that and the we bike, what? the bicycle lanes in copenhagen yes. that's amazing that's really, that's really nice. amazing yeah yes. uh, where in sweden do you live now by the way skorna it's south of sweden so it's like oh, one hour almost there, almost yeah. denmark as well yes so we are very close to denmark so we go there often and, and now um, I just want to give a shout out again to some of our viewers. And another one has a, a, an interesting question, Chester, and he said, "What do you think? What can you say about this year's uh, Miss Earth virtual pageant?" I think it's the the only way to do it. So it's very correct of them to do it. It's uh, the only. It's there is not no other way. It's not an option. So, and I think it's so great that they've gone out so fast with the. They resolve this is how it's going to be and this is what we're going to do everything we can to make it as good as possible so i really really hope that uh, so as many people as possible will be watching and will be joining and uh, will be active so it won't have a, um, a year that it will be less important or less uh, of its gratitude so i really really hope it will it will be as popular as ever really i think they will whatever they can to make it as good as possible so we just have to support them I think it's the same as uh, former former Ms. Earth uh, Angelia also said that uh, Ms. Earth um, Ms. Earth's mission is to to um, how do how, how do I say this raise awareness and it's no better time than to do it than now especially when we're in a pandemic. Absolutely. Yeah. And uh, another another message from Joe uh, love Denmark. So what do you think needs to happen to have another winner from your country? <laughs> we just have to make the girls um, participate. We need to find a good organization so that we can actually make the girls participate. Because I think, as you said before, we have so many beautiful girls that are highly educated, well aware, and very, mm. they're really, really, it's a huge cause for everybody that lives in Scandinavia. We know of the consequences and we know, we understand as well that we can do whatever we want to do about the environment in Denmark and Sweden but we are just such a small part of the big world. So if we do not help and, and get the cause out and, and spread it in the world to make the other pieces, parts of the world as well do something about the environment, then it doesn't matter what we're doing in Denmark. It will still be a huge problem for, for us as well, for everybody. So we just need to make them participate. They have a lot to, they have a lot to offer. Yeah. Another one is from Tofi. Uh, mm -hmm. Do you still have contact with your carousel family? <laughs> yes, I do. <laughs> of course. Uh, absolutely. As I said as well, I really hope to come back as a judge and bring my daughter someday. I was hoping to be able to do it this year, but since it's not possible this year, perhaps next year or as soon as possible. Uh, so. Hopefully, hopefully we'll see you next year here in Manila. Great. I would love to. Yeah. And another from Gliza. Looks like you never age. Thank you. <laughs> I think everyone is in unison and saying and oh. saying this. You know, that's a very good compliment. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it was a huge and step turning forty last year. Yeah. <laughs> you turned forty last year. Yes. Ah, uh, you're so you're turning forty-one this year. Yes. Oh, so we are same age. <laughs> <laughs> Wikipedia was wrong. You know, I check on Wikipedia the year that you were born. It says 1982. It's like, okay, you're younger than me. And then, no, like, no. I was born. born in... Finally, I'm so happy. You know, because not so many beauty queens were born in 1979. And I'm always like, who is the. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you were born. 
Stephen is, has been looking for that beauty queen who, who was born in the same year. 1979. I've been checking on that one on Wikipedia, and <laughs> I couldn't find anyone except for Empoli Kualagobe, who was Miss Universe in 1999. And then it's like nobody else aside from her. It's like uh, Miss Earth is the youngest pageant. So <laughs> if I no, miss, okay. yeah, you have you. Have, yeah. <laughs> Go 1979. Good year. Very good year. Very challenging year as well, but very good year. Very. And a lot of uh, a lot of the achieve achievers were born in 1979. Oh, really? <laughs> like the two of you. <laughs> yeah. Um. I think uh, winners from 1979 have really uh, who were born in 1979 were really amazing. Like Miss Universe 1999, Empole, did amazing wow. job in in her in her. With the AIDS uh, awareness and charity in Africa, and then we have you, Miss Earth. You know, lawyer. Exactly. <laughs> okay, so I'll be reading two more uh, messages, and they're still the same as what we've read earlier from Kaylee. <laughs> wow, pretty. Kaylee. <laughs> yeah, and finally from Ems. Hi, Miss Earth, two thousand one. Gorgeous. Thank you, Ems. So nice. Yeah, like I said, and here's another one from Newey. You're the perfect Miss Earth pioneer. Carousel chose a great first winner. Oh, thank you very much. I'm so yeah. happy about that. So proud. It is actually a, quite a challenge, right? You know, to to be able to choose the right winner on your first pageant because it's like the do or die thing, you know, the, the deal breaker. Yeah. If, Absolutely. If they hadn't chosen wisely then probably it would have been it miss earth would have gone a different path but they had they had you as the winner of course probably it would be still the same i'm not sure if they had miss brazil as the winner or miss kazakhstan or miss argentina but you you set you set the you set the tone and i think that's, that's the kind of winners that we've been seeing every year like you know a really good um spokesperson uh very influential very beautiful commanding and uh someone who would actually like really catch your attention and you would like to listen to that person speaking about environment um and uh issues that that affect the earth even in in modern times it keeps on changing like yeah. a lot of a lot of uh issues just keep on coming out right? just really not just when we thought that it's over and then there's another another one that comes out so it is a continuous global struggle and uh battle that we have it just gets more and more important yeah that's i can yeah i can vouch on that it's, mm -hmm. uh, it's true. yeah okay so now at this point we are now at the home stretch of the interview and here I'll be asked. We will be asking our regular questions. So we ask all of the former winners that we ask. Yeah. So the first question is: um, As a former Miss Earth contestant I, and title holder and judge, what advice can you give women who are already as accomplished as you are, but are interested in joining beauty pageants? I think that they should go for it. Why not? Just stay true to themselves and be honest and believe in the cause. Then you can get very far. Be humble to the task and uh, be a good person. Be nice. That's, and that's a, great tip. <laughs> that's a great tip. I couldn't and have that, worded it better. You know, it's, <laughs> it's true. It is true. And now I pass the mic to Stephen. My question? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> My question is, um, I want to know how do you see, how do you see yourself in the next uh, five to 10 years? Aside from dealing with the teenage kids. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> not an easy task. It's I see a... myself exactly where I am. I love my mm -hmm. life the way it is. And I found the co perfect combination of a life in the countryside, mm -hmm. with the lifestyle I love with the horses and uh, with my husband and my family. And I still get to work as a lawyer and uh, combine my day just the way I want. And then every day after work, I get to be in the stable with the kids and the ponies. And it's just so much fun. Uh, I love the combination, and we can we can go somewhere and, and Copenhagen and and feel the city, and then go back into the nature again. That's mm -hmm. that's the way I like it. 
So hopefully just the same as this, just with a bit older kids. We don't get older, of course, but the kids will grow older. Nothing to do about it. <laughs> yeah. And finally, the final question. Aside from becoming Miss Earth 2001, the first Miss Earth and the only major pageant winner of Denmark, mm -hmm. how do you want people to remember you? <sighs> that was a good question. Well, as as true true and honest person and, and true to the cause and um, yeah, um, natural. I think that's what I am. I'm very natural. I'm not a fan of uh, anything unnatural with my body or in my life. So true to nature and natural and honest and um, yeah, taking care of myself. Once again, thank you very much, Katharina, for agreeing to do this beauty talks with Mrs. Oli. It was great fun. It was great to be back. It's thank short, you. but it's so meaningful, and we have um, uh, we have learned a lot. And I hope that our listeners also have learned um, a thing or two on how to, you know. Um, focus on what is really important in in their lives so i think that's uh, that's one thing that i have once again felt and realized after talking to you well oh, we're just the same age in a way but yeah it's, it's great it's great to see someone from from my age <laughs> from my age range you know talking about life <laughs> yeah you only have one life so you should get the best out of it yeah that's true you know life began at 40 again and exactly. once we turn 50, we're going to say that same thing again. Life begins at 50. <laughs> they say <laughs> that 70s are the new 50s. So, I mean, 40s are the new 20s, right? I, yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I can only <laughs> agree. <laughs> yeah. It was great to be back. And I hope to see you soon again. And I really hope sure, to see you Sure, yeah. Well. We hope to see you here in Manila. Hopefully yeah, me too. Year. Or soon. maybe when you're here in Japan, you know. Who knows? Because we have the Olympics next year. and. Uh, yeah, I know. Yeah, I remember when we when we messaged you on our, on your Instagram to invite you. You sounded a bit surprised that we we remembered you and we wanted to talk of to course, you. Of course, of course, we remember you. <laughs> oh, it was very fun to be back. Really, I remember you yeah. very well. You were writing every day. It was a good place to write what's happening and what's going on and what are people thinking. It was very interesting. Actually, when, when you won Miss Earth and I saw your name, uh, mm -hmm. Katharina Svensson, I was also already thinking like, um, I'm not sure if she is 100% Danish because the son, because yeah, if you were Danish, you could have been sent. Yeah, absolutely. My father yeah. is Swedish and he's born in Denmark, but his uh, parents were Swedish. So I yeah. am half Swedish. So I'm I, back to the roots now. <laughs> my late uncle is from Denmark. Um <laughs> He married my 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 auntie, um, and they lived in Australia. So many Danish people in Australia. Scandinavians have traveled a lot. They're yeah. All over the world. yeah. And uh, it's it's really nice to reintroduce you to our younger pageant. Yeah, to so the, the younger yeah. generation. You know, this is our first Miss Earth here. Because for, for for the younger for the younger fans, they only know um, Karen or um, Angelia, Jamie, and. Uh, Pongkan and uh, Nellis, but it's nice to, to introduce them, the very first Miss Earth, Miss yeah, Catherine. Yeah, I hope to see them in person next year in the Philippines instead. Yes, and uh, <laughs> to wrap up this interview, thank you again, everyone, for joining Miss Astrology Beauty Talks, and it's been a pleasure. And if you want to watch all the other interviews, just go to our Facebook page, facebook.com slash Miss Astrology, or our YouTube account, um, Miss Astrology Coverage. Also, please follow us on our social media accounts. They are flash at the bottom of the screen. And also, please follow Katharina on her Instagram account. <laughs> it's uh, katharina.brink. Yes, and uh, also, please follow me and Stephen. Um, and <laughs> um, again, it's great to have you, Katharina. Um, I just want to ask you for uh, a, a short message to all the Earthlings and the fans out there. Yeah, you want to hear for, like your final word for two. You have a very solid um, <laughs> fan base, the Earthlings. Yeah, uh, uh, because uh, when we when we posted the the banner photo for the mm -hmm. promotion, a lot has messaged that they're so excited to to hear from you, uh, to know how right. have you born. So, yeah. any message to them? 
Yeah, just keep on uh, staying true to the cause and keep on fighting for the environment so we can do something together and keep on uh, supporting the Miss Earth to make it even better and bigger so we can get out the, uh, the message. Again, thank you, Katharina, and thank you, thank Stephen. Katharina. Thank you to all the fans. Good to and see thank you. you everyone. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in. Uh, see you next time. Goodbye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. <laughs>